the ultimate guide to speech recognition with Python. Have you ever wondered how to add speech recognition to your Python project? If so, then keep watching. It's easier than you might think. Including speech recognition in a Python project really is simple. In this guide, you'll find out how. You'll learn how speech recognition works, what packages are available on PyPI, and how to install and use the Speech Recognition Package, a full-featured and easy-to-use Python speech recognition library. In the end, you'll apply what you've learned to a simple guess the word game and see how it all comes together. So let's get started. How Speech Recognition Works, an overview. Before we get to the nitty gritty of doing speech recognition in Python, let's take a moment to talk about how speech recognition works. A full discussion would fill a book, so I won't bore you with all of the technical details here. In fact, this section is not a prerequisite for the rest of the course. If you'd like to get straight to the point, then feel free to skip ahead. Speech recognition has its roots in research done in the Bell Labs in the early 1950s. Early systems were limited to a single speaker and had limited vocabularies of about a dozen words. Modern speech recognition systems have come a long way since their ancient counterparts, and they can recognise speech from multiple speakers and have enormous vocabularies in numerous languages. The first component of speech recognition is, of course, speech. Speech must be converted from a physical sound to an electrical signal with a microphone, and then to digital data with an analogue to digital converter. Once digitised, several models can be used to transcribe the audio to text. Most modern speech recognition systems rely on what is known as a hidden Markov model. This approach works on the assumption that a speech signal, when viewed on a short enough timescale, say 10 milliseconds, can be reasonably approximated as a stationary process. That is, a process in which statistical properties do not change over time. In a typical HMM, the speech signal is divided into 10 millisecond fragments. The power spectrum of each fragment, which is essentially a plot of the signal's power as a function of frequency, is mapped to a vector of real numbers known as septal coefficients. The dimension of this vector is usually small, sometimes as low as 10, although more accurate systems may have dimension 32 or more. The final output of the HMM is a sequence of these vectors. To decode the speech into text, groups of vectors are matched to one or more phonemes, a fundamental unit of speech. This calculation requires training, since the sound of a phoneme varies from speaker to speaker, and even varies from one utterance to another by the same speaker. A special algorithm is then applied to determine the most likely word or words that produce the given sequence of phonemes. One can imagine that this whole process may be computationally expensive. In many modern speech recognition systems, neural networks are used to simplify the speech signal using techniques for feature transformation and dimensionality reduction before the HMM recognition step. Voice activity detectors are also used to reduce an audio signal to only the portions that are likely to contain speech. This prevents the recognizer from wasting time analyzing unnecessary parts of the signal. Fortunately, as a Python programmer, you don't have to worry about any of this. A number of speech recognition services are available for use online through an API, and many of these services offer Python SDKs. In the next section, you'll see an overview of available Python packages. Picking a Python speech recognition package. A handful of packages for speech recognition exist on PyPI. A few of them are shown on the list on screen now. Some of these packages, such as API AI and WIT, offer built-in features like natural language processing for identifying a speaker's intent which go beyond basic speech recognition. Others, like Google Cloud Speech, focus solely on speech-to-text conversion. There is one package that stands out in terms of ease of use, speech recognition. Recognising speech requires audio input, and speech recognition makes retrieving this input really easy. Instead of having to build scripts for accessing microphones and processing audio files from scratch, speech recognition will have you up and running in just a few minutes. The speech recognition library acts as a wrapper for several popular speech APIs, 
and is thus extremely flexible. One of these, the Google Web Speech API, supports a default API key that is hard-coded into the speech recognition library. That means you can get up and running without having to sign up for a service. The flexibility and ease of use of the speech recognition package make it an excellent choice for any Python project. However, support for every feature of each API it wraps is not guaranteed. You'll need to spend some time researching the available options to find out if speech recognition will work in your particular case. So, now that you're convinced you should try out speech recognition, the next step is to install it in your environment, and that's what's covered in the following section. Installing speech recognition. Speech recognition is compatible with a wide range of Python versions, but in this course, you'll be seeing version 3.8.1 of speech recognition working in concert with Python 3.9. When working with any new library, it's often a good idea to work in a virtual environment. And if you're unsure how to set one up, take a look at this real Python course. Here you can see me creating a virtual environment on Mac OS and then switching to it using the following command. You can install speech recognition from a terminal using pip. Once speech recognition is installed, verify the installation by opening a Python REPL and typing the following seen on screen. Once you've verified that the right version of speech recognition is installed, leave the Python REPL open as you'll be working with it a little later. Speech recognition will work out of the box if all you need to do is work with the existing audio files. Specific use cases, however, require a few dependencies. Notably, the Pi audio package is needed for capturing microphone input. But next, let's dive in and explore the basics of the package. The Recognizer class. All of the magic in speech recognition happens within the Recognizer class. The primary purpose of each Recognizer instance is, of course, to recognize speech. Each instance comes with a variety of settings and functionality for recognizing speech from an audio source. Creating an instance is easy. In your Python REPL, just type the following. Each recognizer instance has seven methods for recognizing speech from an audio source using various APIs. These are Recognize Bing, Microsoft Bing Speech, Recognize Google, Google Web Speech API, Recognize Google Cloud, Google Cloud Speech, which requires installation of the Google Cloud Speech package, Recognize Houndify, Houndify by SoundHound, Recognize IBM, IBM Speech to Text, Recognize Sphinx, CMU Sphinx, which requires installation of Pocket Sphinx. And finally, Recognize Wit, which uses wit.ai. Of the seven, only Recognize Sphinx works offline with the CMU Sphinx engine. The other six all require an internet connection, so keep this in mind as you work. Due to the complexity of speech recognition, a full discussion of the features and benefits of each API is beyond the scope of this course. Since speech recognition ships with a default API key for the Google Web Speech API, you can get started with it straight away. For this reason, you'll be using the Web Speech API in this course. The other six APIs all require authentication with either an API key or a username password combination. For more information, consult the speech recognition documentation. An important note is that the default key provided by speech recognition is for testing purposes only, and Google may revoke it at any time. It is not a good idea to use the Google Web Speech API in production. Even with a valid API key, you'll be limited to only 50 requests per day, and there is no way to raise this quota. Fortunately, speech recognition's interface is nearly identical for each API, so what you learn in this course will be easy to translate to a real-world project. 
Each recognized method will throw a speech recognition dot request error exception if the API is unreachable. For recognized Sphinx, this could happen as the result of a missing, corrupt, or incompatible Sphinx installation. For the other six methods, request error may be thrown if quota limits are met, the server is unavailable, or there's no internet connection. With those prerequisites out of the way, let's get our hands dirty. Go ahead and try to call Recognize Google in your interpreter session. You probably got an error similar to the one on screen, and you may well have guessed this would happen. After all, how could something be recognized from nothing? All seven recognized methods of the recognizer class require an audio data argument. In each case, audio data must be an instance of speech recognition's audio data class. There are two ways to create an audio data instance, either from an audio file or audio recorded by a microphone. Audio files are a little easier to get started with, so let's take a look at that in the next section. Working with audio files. Before you continue, you'll need an audio file to work with. The one I'm working with in this course is included in the course files, and you should make sure you save it to the same directory in which your Python interpreter session is running. Speech recognition makes working with audio files easy thanks to the handy audio file class. This class can be initialized with the path to an audio file and provides a context manager interface for reading and working with the file's contents. Currently, speech recognition supports the following file formats. WAV, which must be in PCM or LPCM format, AIFF, AIFFC, and FLAC, which must be native FLAC format, OGFLAC is not supported. If you're working on an x86 based Linux, Mac OS or Windows machine, you should be able to work with FLAC files without a problem. On other platforms, you'll need to install a FLAC encoder and ensure you have access to the FLAC command line tool. Using record to capture data from a file. Type the following into your interpreter session to process the contents of the harvard.wav file. The context manager opens the file and reads its contents, storing the data in an audio file instance called source. Then the record method records the data from the entire file into an audio data instance, in this case called audio. You can confirm this by checking the type of the audio object. You can now invoke recognize Google to attempt to recognize any speech in the audio. Depending on your internet connection speed, you may have to wait several seconds before seeing the result. Congratulations, you've just transcribed your first audio file. If you're wondering where the phrases in the harvard.wav file come from, they are examples of Harvard sentences. These phrases were published by the IEEE in 1965 for use in speech intelligibility testing of telephone lines. They're still used in VOIP and cellular testing today. The Harvard sentences are comprised of 72 lists of 10 phrases. You can find freely available recordings of these phrases on the Open Speech Repository website. Recordings are available in English, Mandarin Chinese, French and Hindi. They provide an excellent source of free material for testing your code. Capturing segments with offset and duration. What if you only want to capture a portion of the speech in a file? The record method accepts a duration keyword argument that stops the recording after a specified number of seconds. For example, the following captures any speech in the first four seconds of the file. The record method, when used inside a with block, always moves ahead in the file stream. This means if you record once for 4 seconds and then record again for 4 seconds, 
The second time returns the four seconds of audio after the first four seconds. Notice that audio 2 contains a portion of the third phrase in the file. When specifying a duration, the recording might stop mid-phrase or even mid-word, which can hurt the accuracy of the transcription. More on this follows. In addition to specifying a recording duration, the record method can be given a specific starting point using the offset keyword argument. This value represents the number of seconds from the beginning of the file to ignore before starting to record. To capture only the second phrase in the file, you could start with an offset of 4 seconds and record for, say, 3 seconds. The offset and duration keyword arguments are useful for segmenting an audio file if you have prior knowledge of the structure of the speech that's in the file. However, using them hastily can result in poor transcriptions. To see this effect, try the following in your REPL. By starting the recording at 4.7 seconds, you miss the first portion at the beginning of the phrase, so the API didn't get all of it, and mismatched it to the wrong word. There is another reason you may get inaccurate transcriptions, noise. The previous examples work well because the audio file is reasonably clean. In the real world, unless you have the opportunity to process audio files beforehand, you can't expect the audio to be noise free. In the next section, you'll see some techniques to deal with noise in audio files.